Kia ora whanau and welcome to the Get a Job and Get Healthy uh, podcast with Costas Enterprises. I am your host Alex Costas from Costas Enterprises and today uh, we're going to get back to a little bit more of the work stuff and this particular one is what to expect in a panel interview. Um, as I've said in every single blog post uh, as well as every single podcast, you can feel free to go to my blog and you will find more about what I'm going to talk about uh, in written form and a couple of other subjects there in regards to what I talk about. Uh, thank you so much for uh, the comments and um, listeners that I've had so far, uh, especially in the last couple of episodes. It's been really good and I hope to grow this community a little bit more. So feel free to comment, like, share. Just let you know what's working, what isn't working. Uh, am I talking too fast? Uh, am I talking too slow? Am I talking too loud? And so forth. I'd really love to hear your opinions. But let's get on to the uh, matter at hand. What to expect in a panel interview. So a big part of interviewing these days is panel interviews. And it's a style of interview um, where you're being asked questions by a panel of usually two to four people. Uh, in most instances, you will be there by yourself. In some instances, you will be, you, you may be actually interviewed with someone else that is applying for the job at the same time. Uh, usually, that is uh, in something like retail. Uh, now, one of the one of the things that is different is the dynamic of the actual interview. Now, panel interviews, if you didn't realise already, they are meant to be slightly intimidating. Now, the reason for this is they want to see, the employer wants to see what you're like under pressure, okay? Uh, if you are able to show the employer that you can answer the behavioural questions, um, which is answering questions uh, using the star examples that we've covered in a previous podcast episode, um, and basically that the skill that they're trying to find is the skill that you've got and that you can show it or you can demonstrate it. Um, now, as I did say, we have covered star examples previously, so please feel free to go back to a previous podcast episode or alternatively, you can also go to my uh, blog website. Uh, the details will be in the podcast description. And you can actually uh, find a bit more in-depth information about how to actually create your own star examples, which I advise people to do. Now, when you get in the room, because um, you will usually be in a, a room when you are being interviewed, you'll be placed on the opposite side of the interviewers, um, and you'll notice that each person will have their own set of papers. Um, usually it'll look like each person has about seven to eight pages, uh, and these will have questions on them. Now, don't stress about this. Each person has the exact same questions, uh, and each interviewer will take their turn asking one question about one skill, okay? Um, now, before the uh, interview actually starts, you'll be told by the person that's the chairperson or the head interviewer uh, what kind of interview is taking place. Uh, they'll usually do introductions of the other two members. You'll have your chance to sort of introduce yourself, um, and then they'll go, okay, we'll go ahead with the uh, with the interview. Now, each page will have one question uh, being asked, but this will be actually a lot longer of a question. Um, it's likely to be it's likely to be two to three questions um, in one long question. So, I did cover one of these questions previously in one of my other podcast episodes. Uh, but for now, I'm going to give you an example of one of these questions. It may be something like, um, the person might start off with, this question is in relation to customer service. Can you tell us a time when you gave excellent customer service? What did you do? How did you go above and beyond for the customer care? And what was the result of the service? Now, be prepared to have a question thrown at you um, from any of the other interviewers. Uh, you'll notice that the the person that's asking the question um, will be watching you the whole time. You'll also have another person that will be writing, and they will be effectively writing what it is that you're actually saying. Uh, and then the third person will be doing a mix between writing you and watching you. Now, 
that person, they're not actually listening to your answer. What they're usually doing is they're actually trying to see your body language. How are you sitting? How are you remembering the information? Is your Are your eyes turning to the left when you do a memory? Um, all those sorts of things um, it gets looked at. And it does sound a little intimidating, but trust me, it, it sounds worse than it actually is. So the Azuba, um they basically want to make sure that they want to see if you're nervous or you're shaken. Um, they may also be uh, watching you to see if you're keeping eye contact with everybody in the room. That's a specifically important um, skill, especially if you are applying for a job in as a front of house or of retail, where you're going to be greeting the customer at all times. Now, you may find that you get asked additional questions in regards to your answer. Uh, this can actually be one of two things. Uh, it can either be the employer's way of clarifying what it is that the, you said, um, um, or it could be the employer's way of showing a further interest in your answer, and as such, wanting to hear more about what it is that you actually said. Uh, depending on how you feel that you're answering the question, you might perceive it as a different way. But don't think that just because a person is asking an extra question that you have uh, effectively stuffed it up. You may have actually piqued their interest and they, they want you to develop more. Now, as I've said in my previous podcast, I do want people to create their own star examples in the first uh, instance and practice those because those star examples when you're dealing with a particular skill those will help you in the long run okay especially in these sorts of situations the more detailed that you are in your star example that you've created the more detailed you'll be able to answer these questions that come at you and when these questions come at you you can actually go delve even deeper into it because you've thought about it and you've remembered what has happened to you um, now, you will be asked around six to seven long questions in total. Uh, at the end of the interview, you'll also be given an opportunity to ask questions yourself. So the last question is really important. Um, we are going to also cover that that uh, in this podcast as well about how important that question is. So um, stick around a little bit longer for that. Now, once the interview is over, you will then leave and the employer will then, they'll basically, they'll do like a little deliberation. And that deliberation will be when they start looking at your answers um, and they'll also rank you. Now, a lot of people don't realize that you are being ranked in the system. The reason they are ranking you is because they are actually looking at you versus the other people that they're actually um uh, interviewing, and they want to make sure that they are getting the correct person. Now, uh, this is not meant as a shock, um, but one of the things that I always advise people is make sure that you are taking note of what it is that you're saying. Um, the employer usually has decided within the first five minutes of meeting you if they want to employ you or not. So in a panel interview, it'll usually be about 45 minutes, uh, sometimes half an hour. You basically have 25 minutes or 40 minutes to change their mind. Make them want you. That is, a, that is the whole point of why you're practicing these things. Um, now, some people get angry at me when I say that because they think, oh, well, you're just destining me to fail. It's like, no, I'm being real with you. Most employers, they want to see, do you fit with their team? Are you likely to discuss with them? All those sorts of things people need to actually hear, um, which is why I'm mentioning it now. And I do mention it in my blog posts as well. Uh, it does come off as a bit uh, negative at times. It is not meant that way. It is meant more as a shock for you so that you realize that even though you might be as confident as the world, Unless you actually deliver, um, there is a chance that you might fuck it up, basically. And excuse my language. So, what we're going to talk about now, in the second half of this podcast, is what to ask at the end of the interview. Um, now, I'm going to tell you a little secret. A lot of people don't realize the question at the end of the interview is actually really important. 
Now, stick with me. The reason why it's so important is because if you haven't swayed the employer, like I was just talking about, this might be the chance to do it. Okay, so as I said, I don't want to come over too over dramatic and put too much strength on it, but in a way, this is true. You could have done all the prep work in the world. You could have absolutely bombed the interview. And hey, it happens. I've bombed a few interviews in my time as well. Nerves are a real problem. And in another podcast, I will cover that issue as well. However, if you have ever bombed an interview, even if you've bombed it, you may ask a really compelling and interested question. And then that gives you an, it gives the impression to the employer that you are genuinely interested in the role and the work that they're doing and the organization. Remember that your interview should be more like a conversation. This will give the employer more of an idea of how you will work within the team. So a lot of people, they say, oh, I want, you know, I had to do this interview. If you can go into the interview as this is going to be a great conversation, you might be applying for a new job. You might be, you know, trying to get that, that job that's going to change your life. But if you can go in there thinking this is a conversation and talk to the people that you're going to be working with, you're more likely to be actually hired. Now, believe it or not, your question could be the reason you get the job. Or, if you don't get the job, it might be a reason you get a callback for another job. Now, I know you don't want to think about callbacks and you want the job now, but don't be so quick to dismiss that callback. If the job or the company is someone you really want to work for, then it may be worth the wait. So, what type of question are you talking about, Alex? Well, before I ask that question, there are some rules you might want to follow. Number one, and it sounds pretty stupid, but it's really easy, do your research on the employer. Now, what I mean by this is, what is the job you're applying for? What field is it in? And what do you want to know specifically about the role? Now, number two, ask a question you actually want answered. Think about the job you you will be will be doing. What will be expected of you as an employee, or something regarding the field that you intend to work in? Number three, don't ask what does the job pay, or when will I hear, or how many applicants have applied. They will provide this information, but you don't want to come across as only in it for the money, because you will fail every single time. Number four, show an interest in the job and also what they respond when the employer responds. That is the goal of your questions, to get them talking. Number five, at the end of them answering your question, I know it sounds stupid, but thank them for answering your question. Manners are key, people. Manners are key. So I'm going to give you an example of a couple of questions you can ask, the kind of questions you can ask. Um, so say, for example, you're applying for a job where the employer works with a biometric data collection and you have no experience in biometrics. Do your research. A simple Google search under biometric data collection and the employer will give you a vast result of answers. For example, the company may deal specifically in data collection of biometric passports. And your question could be something like... Uh, Given that your company collects biometric data from passports, how does the software determine and translate this data into information we can view? Already you're asking them something that they're going, oh, I have to think about this. It's not a simple, basic, oh, how was your day type question. It's something they have to genuinely think about. And if they know, and they've got a passion for it, then they will delve right into it. Or you may ask another question like, has your company ever found any concerns regarding the security and or privacy from uh, clients using biometric sensors? How did you resolve these issues? See, what you're trying to do is you're almost flipping the script on them. You're almost turning around 
and going to them and going, hey, you asked me all these star examples. I'm going to ask you all these questions, but be interested. You're there to... You're not there to feign interest. You're there to actually be interested. You want to work for this place. So what are you trying to achieve with these questions? Well, you're trying to show your genuine genuine interest for the organization. You're trying to get the employer talking to you about what they're passionate about, especially if you are being interviewed by a CEO or an owner-operator of the business. You're also creating a dialogue between you and your future employer, you're showing them what you will look like in their team. Now, be prepared for for a potential follow-up question. And what I mean by that is, if you've asked the first question that we talked about, and then you turn around and throw another question in there, it just shows that you're even more interested. And if the employer replies with like a one-word answer, like, yep, it's good, well, then try another open-ended question. Okay, now an open-ended question is when you ask the uh, a question which means that the employer cannot give a one-word answer. They have to give more uh, to respond. Now there is a there is an Amazon affiliate link in my original blog post under this section, uh, which basically says how to ask better questions and it's a it's a book it is a good book um it's called talk to me how to ask better questions get better answers and interview anyone like a pro now the skills that i gained from that did actually help me when i was interviewing but what i want you to do is take some time think about the job that you're applying about uh, applying for and then Think about the question. Now, another thing that we don't cover, uh, which I do cover in other uh, podcasts as well as other blog posts, is I talk about the ability where you can actually take your star examples in. If you do feel nervous, if you do feel uncomfortable um, in interviews, you can mention that right at the start of the interview and say, hey, look, I've got something. Uh, I've got some... uh, some notes is it okay if I refer to them during the interview you you set this out right from the start and you tell them you're a little bit nervous you want to be honest and open with your first employer because this employer is going to turn around and go yes or no and if they say no then you have to ask yourself do you really want to be working for that employer remember interviews are supposed to make you feel anxious they're supposed to make you feel tense The people on the other side of the table do not feel tense. They've already got the job. So take your time. Learn. Practice. Put the work in. And I guarantee you will get that job. And if you don't get that job, you'll get another job. Good luck, people. Have a great day. And know that I believe in you. I believe you can nail this. If you do have any questions, please contact me. My blog details are in there. I've got my personal email on there. You're more than welcome to contact me if you've got any questions. Um, Even if you've got questions about creating a question, I can try and help you. I want you to get a job. And I want you to get healthy. Thank you for listening and have a fantastic day.